now that we've got a GraphQL query to fetch or create a card by an ID that we pass, as well as mutations to add items, increase or decrease item quantities, as well as remove items from the cart completely, now we want to explore adding a GraphQL mutation that will create a Stripe checkout session so users can pay for their orders. We'll be using a service called Stripe. It has a great API for accepting and making payments online. We'll be using a specific product of theirs called Checkout. Checkouts are pre-built pages that you don't need to host or build yourself, but you can interact with the API to provide all of the necessary data that Stripe needs to show your users what you are paying for and what payment methods are accepted, as well as provide things such as delivery addresses and billing addresses and much more. Let's take a quick look at the demo that Stripe have for us. We can see here that we have one-time payments and recurrent payments as a demo option. We will use the one-time payment option. And you can see here, you can customize this to include all of your different brand colors. And it supports things like coupons, tax, shipping, and accepting phone numbers. When users are redirected to the checkout, they'll get an overview of what the cart looks like. And you can specify options when creating a checkout, whether you want to allow users to update the quantity directly inside of Stripe. You'll need to sign up for an account to get started. Once logged in, you'll land on the Stripe dashboard. It's here you'll want to activate payments. You'll need to tell Stripe a little bit about your business and who you are. Stripe will then verify that and activate your account so it can be used to accept real payments from real customers. But before you do that, you can continue building and developing using the test data mode. You can get started without activating your account. You can view your API keys and make test orders and payments using Stripe's test card details. We'll learn about that a little bit later. Next, inside of my code, I'm gonna open the schema.graphql file. And inside of our mutation, let's now go ahead and create a new mutation and we'll call this create checkout session. This will take an input type and we'll call create checkout session input. And this will now return a new type called checkout session. Let's scroll down and let's add this new type, checkout session. This will contain an ID and it will contain a URL, which is of the type string that is nullable. These two values will actually come from Stripe. We'll get a URL where we can send our users to the actual checkout. And we'll get an ID from the checkout ID itself. And we'll get an ID from Stripe for the actual checkout session. Lastly, let's go ahead and declare our input type for create checkout session input. Here we'll provide cart ID and we'll pass the ID scalar type. This means for any cart, we can provide the cart ID and, and we can create a Stripe checkout session. To get started, we'll need to install Stripe. I'm going to be using the 8.201.0 version here. Then let's go ahead and install as a dev dependency, the types for the Stripe package. Now with that installed, Inside of my lib folder, I'm going to create a new file and call this stripe.ts. I will then import stripe from stripe, and I will now export a new const called stripe. I will invoke stripe, and I'll need to pass it the API key. I'm going to be using environment variables to do this, so we'll call this stripe secret key, and we'll say this is as string. Then we'll need to pass it the API version. And here I'm going to use 2020.0827. Next, this Stripe secret key will need to declare inside of our env file. So inside of here, let's declare Stripe secret key. And then over on our Stripe dashboard, if we head to API keys, then where we have secret key, we can reveal the test secret key. Now with that copied, we can paste this inside of our env file. It's important that you don't share this. And of course, after I record this video, I will recycle this key so it cannot be used. Now that we've created our environment variable and we've created our Stripe lib file, we will now go ahead and run npm run codegen. If we open our types.ts file and we search for checkout session, we can see here that the GraphQL code generator has successfully created all of the different types and exported those so I can use them inside of my resolver. It's also updated our resolvers, so this contains the root resolver for checkout session. Inside of the index.ts file for our server, We'll now want to create a new mutation resolver for create checkout session. This resolver will be async, will ignore the first argument and will destructure input from the second, as well as fetch Prisma from the GraphQL context. 
Now inside of here, we'll go ahead and destructure cart ID from the input. Then we'll use Prisma to fetch the cart using the find unique method. Here we can pass it where ID is cart ID. If there is no cart, we'll go ahead and we will throw a new error. Instead of using error directly here, we will use the GraphQL Yoga error class. This GraphQL Yoga can be imported from GraphQL Yoga node. Because GraphQL Yoga uses error masking by default, because GraphQL Yoga uses error masking by default, if we were to throw an error here, this wouldn't be leaked to the client. We have to explicitly use GraphQL Yoga error class and provide the message here for that to safely be returned to our user through the GraphQL API. Now, if there is a cart, we actually want to fetch the cart items. So here we can call dot items and update this variable name to be cart items. And then again, we want to check if there are no cart items. So we'll check if there is nothing returned here or the cart items length is equal to zero. Here we'll throw a new GraphQL yoga error and we'll say that the cart is empty. Next, we want to declare some new line items. And these line items need to be in a specific format that match that of the Stripe SDK. So using the map function from JavaScript, for each item, we can return a new object for each item in the array. If we load the Stripe documentation to create a session, we can see here that there are several parameters which are required. We'll need to provide a cancel URL, which we'll do next. Then we'll also need to provide a success URL. Then further on down where we have line items, if we show the child parameters here, we can see that we need to pass price, price data, and we'll also need to pass the things like the quantity and anything else that you want to allow, such as adjustable quantities. If we scroll up to where we have price data, this is where we'll need to pass the currency and the product data. So back inside of our code for everything here, and for the price data, well, we can now create a new object with currency, the unit amount, and the product data. So we'll call currency, and we can say here that this is of the currency code value. The unit amount will be item dot price. And for the product data, well, we can pass a name and that will be item dot name. And we can pass a description, which will be item dot description. Otherwise that will be undefined. And for the images, we will get the image from the item. If there is an image, we want to put this in an array the actual product data from Stripe is expecting an array of image URLs. So here we can create a new array on the fly and we can pass in our image as the only item. Otherwise, if there is no image, we'll return an empty array. Now that we have our line items, we next need to go ahead and actually create that session and return the session object to GraphQL. Now that we have our line items, we next need to go ahead and actually create that checkout session. So let's create a new const called session and we'll await stripe.checkout.sessions.create and here we can provide all the data that we created above. We'll pass line items and we can pass things such as the mode and the mode here will be payment. We'll then go ahead and provide some metadata for our session and here we'll provide the cart ID. This might be useful if you later want to look up what the cart ID was that you created. Then we'll need to provide the success URL and we'll need to provide the cancel URL as well. For the success and cancel URLs, we'll just hard code localhost for now. So this will be localhost slash 3000 and we'll send users to the page called thank you. Using query strings, we can actually send back the session ID and we can do that using a special value called checkout underscore session underscore ID. This will make a little bit more sense when we create this thank you page. This will send users back to the website and using the checkout ID, we can then look up from Stripe the actual order so we can show users the current status. If an order is canceled, we want to send users back to the cart. So we'll send users back to localhost 3000 slash cart and we'll provide a query string here that says canceled equals true. We don't have a cart page just yet. So this will just return to a 404 page, but we'll fix that in a later video when we build the front end for our store. Then all that's left to do is return the ID, which is session.id and the URL, session.url. Now, if we restart our Next.js dev server and we head on over to GraphQL Yoga, 
We should now say instead of a mutation that we have a create checkout session mutation and we can see what input variables are accepted. Let's first check to see what's inside of our cart. We don't have any items. So let's add an item and we'll add another item here and we'll give this an ID of two and we'll update the price. Now if we add that, we can see we have two items in the cart and we have a formatted and a total raw amount. Now I'm going to create a new mutation and I'll call create checkout session and passing to input, we'll pass the cart ID and then we can return the ID from Stripe and the URL for our checkout. Now if we run this mutation, this will contact Stripe, create a new checkout and return the URL for that checkout. If we copy this value and we paste this into a new browser tab, we can see here that we have a total and we have what items are in our cart as well as the individual item prices. So let's go ahead and complete our checkout. And if you're following along and want to create a successful payment, you can use the test card 4242, 4242, 4242, 4242. You can provide any valid expiry year and any CVC. I'll add my name to the checkout here and we can add a dummy postcode. Then if we click pay, this will process this payment on Stripe for the total amount of $60.43. You can now see that Stripe successfully redirected us to thank you on our local host 3000. And using the session ID query string that we configured previously, we can see that it passed the Stripe ID for the session. We can now see inside of our Stripe dashboard that we have some successful payments that we just created using GraphQL mutation and that we placed with the Stripe checkout. So if we scroll down, we can see all of the information about the order, such as what items there were, and the customer that placed the order, as well as the payment information. In this case, we used a test card. So there we have it, a successful checkout payment using Stripe, and it was created initially with our GraphQL mutation.